Somewhere in this city, two young women are looking for safety and freedom. I won't say exactly where. Their hotel room is anonymous. They ran away from a family they say was abusive. But they fear their father will find them and drag them back to Saudi Arabia against their will. What? <laughs> Tonight, they're apprehensive. I'm so nervous. Oh, my God! Waiting for a British barrister who responded to the appeal for help they launched on Twitter. Hi. 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 Toby Cadman is hoping to help the sisters get refugee status and resettlement in a third country. The Turkish police are providing them some protection, but they know their father's still out there. We just have to get you out of Turkey as soon as we can. As, as we know, you're never going to be able to live a free life here whilst your, your father and the, the Saudi embassy is still looking for you. Yeah. Duar is 22, Dalal 20. Yeah. They fled the from the hotel in Turkey where they were on holiday with their father and his second wife. I was running, running, and she was running. Did you know where you were running to? No, no we course. are just running, like, uh, like uh, running, running, uh, and take a taxi. Yeah, and I told so. taxi, just move from this area as yeah. you can. After publicizing their plight on Twitter, they received money and support from activists and women like them who fled Saudi Arabia. But well-wishers can't keep them going indefinitely. <laughs> Last year, amid great fanfare, the Saudi government finally allowed women to drive and then locked up female activists. The Crown Prince and King retained the guardianship laws under which a woman cannot travel without the permission of a male relative. An online Saudi government campaign appears to equate a woman wheeling a suitcase with a young man picking up a rifle. Both, it says, betray the nation and religion. But the social media generation has learnt about a different life. I watch a lot of movies. You watch a lot of movies? Yeah. I watch movie. uh, Sometimes I watch movie like without subtitles, like in Arabic, right. so yeah. I, I watch also YouTube video a lot. You watch a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> we can't independently verify their story, but it's not unique in a country where women have so few rights. Dua says she was forced to wear hijab at the age of 10. Uh, I remember my brother told my mother that I, I removed my hijab. And uh, my mother was beat me with, uh, how to say, stick. wood, like... Like a stick? Yes. Yeah, yeah, in my head. Both sisters say they were beaten frequently. A male relative sexually abused them, and their parents tried to force them to become the third or fourth wife to older, highly religious men. Especially hard for Dua, who is gay. I'm 22, and he's more than 50. Not 50, no more. And he told me now, it's okay, all, uh, uh, all girls uh, get, uh, get married from old men and they love it. Uh, it's, it's haram in our religion too. To say no to your husband. No, you should sleep with him. It's forbidden to say no to your husband. Yeah. yeah. Dalal says one day when she was walking on the street alone, a religious policeman tried to rape her, but she managed to jump out of his car. He took off all my, my clothes. When I, when I uh, took off the car, I was like half uh, naked. Yeah. That's horrible. Everything in my life telling me I can't live in Saudi Arabia anymore. I, I don't think like I burned to be... Burned to be in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I always ask myself, why I'm here? Like, why? Why? Most of the world's citizens still suffer from the hellish routine of taking a day off from work, going to various government offices. But not in Saudi Arabia. But leaving Some wasn't easy, because their father it's uses this government Absher. app, Absher. Critics say it tracks Saudi citizens under the guise of reducing bureaucracy. Way. Unlike what's been claimed lately that this app is being used to monitor or control movements of Saudi women, nothing can be further from the truth. 
But a man can set the app to alert him if his daughter's trying to get on a plane, which is why Dwar and Dalal had to flee while in Turkey. In the afternoon, Toby Cadman is accompanying the sisters to a meeting about their asylum claim. He's hoping he can get a quick referral and push for a third country to take them. Okay, they travel in hope. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go. The meeting is short, and when they come out, all three are subdued. They've been told the referral could take weeks, or months, or years. They've been living off adrenaline and hope, but both are diminishing. Their lawyer thinks the situation is urgent. If the Saudis are prepared to uh, execute and dismember um, a Saudi journalist, US resident, in their consulate, you know, they're prepared to go to serious lengths. And we know that the father of Dua and Dalal have tried to, to locate them, have tried to use the Saudi embassy here to influence t Turkish law enforcement to hand them over. I want uh, asylum. Dua and Dalal are just the latest. In January, Rahaf Kanun went public from Bangkok airport, saying she feared returning to Saudi Arabia. She eventually got asylum in Canada, where she was welcomed by the foreign minister. We are in then two sisters turned up in Georgia with a similar story of how the Saudi state fails to protect women from abuse. The more we see young Saudi women wanting to have a free life, the, the bigger the problem it is for the Saudi authorities, and so they want to, to quash this now. And so these two girls, to them, are, are dispensable. And so we are very concerned that their lives are at risk now. Oh my God. They're on the run. Yeah. By the time this story yeah. is broadcast, they'll have moved to another hotel. If your father caught you and took you back to Saudi Arabia, what would happen to you? My father would kill me before I, I go to Saudi Arabia, here yeah. in Istanbul. I, we will disappear forever. So. Yeah. I, I, I just, I just want to feel safe. Yeah, I want to I wanna feel what it's like to be normal. Yeah. I have like, an, how to say? Simple dreams. Simple dreams, like <laughs> to walk up, no, uh, and no one beat me, no one talk to me, like, I, ju I just want that. Please, like. <laughs> Just a normal young woman, not an angel, looking out over a city of hope and fear, dreaming of a place where she and her sister can live in safety and freedom. Lindsay Hilson reporting. Now, in response to the allegations in Lindsay's report, the Saudi embassy here in London have said the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia wishes to stress that the welfare of its women, as with the welfare of all its citizens, is regarded as the highest priority. We take allegations of the na this nature extremely seriously and necessary steps have been put in place to ensure that authorities can respond properly to claims of abuse. Saudi Arabia's guardianship system is subject to frequent misrepresentation. Royal decree has placed the kingdom's guardianship system under review.